for tuning in to the Impact Thursday Bible Study here at the Bethlehem Temple Church of Albany, which is located at 2516D Dawson Road in the Largo Plaza. We pray that you'll be blessed by the word. If you feel so led to sow, the ways to give will be located on the screen. And again, we thank you for tuning in. God bless you. So in uh, Proverbs 29, let's look at um, verse... 18 um yes let's let's look at verse 18 in uh, proverbs 29 and it says where there is no vision the people perish uh that word perish uh it it another a word for it means to make naked um but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. All right? On um, tonight, I want to talk about the system of pursuit. The system of pursuit. All right? We have, of course, over the past uh, few meetings, we've been talking about um, a belief system. We've been talking from Matthew 17. We've been... I'm going to tell you all, when I... Um, it was as if God was saying you are not where you used to be, that your system is working better than it was before. And so it was almost as if when God was leading us, starting us in Matthew 17, that we begin to go down this journey. And then it was like I was arrested to a reality that that hey you guys are not where you were before your system works better than it has before and so i began to just dig back into it and 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 so then the lord began to just have me focus on this and so tonight we're talking about the system of pursuit let's go to hebrews 11 and 6 because this is where it be kind of began to spring out um i was reading second peter and then hebrews 11 and 6 popped up in my mind um of course we are very familiar with this scripture as we read the uh, the faith book of hebrews and so it says um hebrews 11 it says but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Everybody say cometh. Cometh, all right? And so, um, and so the system of pursuit is very important. And I use these two scriptures and um, the picture of them. Um, when you think about what God does, he takes people... Let's look at this scripture here in the book of Hebrews 19 and 10. I'm just read it. Y'all can write it down for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. All right. Um, Luke 19 and 10 for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. All right. And so when I think about the system of pursuit, I think about. When I was 18 years old, I was, how many people when you was in high school, because I know this, this ain't for the kids, but when you were in high school, you didn't know what you wanted to do. <laughs> you know, they like, well, what do you want to do? What you, what you want, you, do you know you want to go to school? Do you know what you want to do? What do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know. And I just picked a school because I really didn't know what I wanted to do exactly. So I just picked a school. I just picked something and, and just kind of went with it, right? And so, um, so I remember when I turned 18 and, um, and I moved to Atlanta to go to school. I was going to the school. I was going to school for text engineering. I didn't know nothing about text engineering, fabric formation, fibers, and all this stuff like this. And I started going to this church in Atlanta because my brother was going there. And in October 10th, uh, well, really it was October 3rd, is where the Lord began to impress upon me to get saved. Now, once I 
uh, responded to him, um, I began to move in a certain direction. And then once October 10th hit, then that's when I came up front to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, once the Holy Spirit came in and once that day hit, then it was as if all the figuring it out began to leave. And I entered into vision. It was as if the Lord began to say, this is what I want to do with your life. This is what I want you to do. He began to talk to me about preaching. He began to uh, cast things into my life. And I was able to go into a mode of pursuing. All right. Now, this is very important because because there's a lot of people in the world and they're gaining age in their life and they're still trying to figure it out. But the Lord set up salvation and one of the treasures of salvation is so you can go out of the lost world and into the world where you have vision, where you can pursue. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right. And so what God did to me when I was 18, uh, I began to seek him as I began to Hebrews 11 and 6. Uh, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligent. So when I began to seek him, he began to talk to me, not about everything, but he gave me something to pursue. He gave me something to set my heart after. And so he told me I was a preacher. And so I began to say, OK, well, what is that about? And so I began to look at preachers. I began to study preachers. I, I was in school. I was doing class. I didn't care about it. <laughs> I was in school. School didn't make no to me but the reason why I didn't feel like my life was lost is because God had gave me something to pursue so I was pursuing it even though this part of my life didn't make any sense even though this part of my life wasn't really coming together it didn't matter because when it came to the certainty of my existence God had given me vision. And so I knew that I would be doing something around the world of preaching. I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't know how it was going to work out. I didn't know how I was going to chart this water. I didn't know how my job was going to be set up. Listen, I fell in love with the vision. And so, um, and so I would sleep with my body. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, uh, I would, I would read chapters in a day and then go to work and just rather, you know what I'm saying, just bother people. The whole shift, just the whole shift. You know, they're like, Lord, I don't want to talk about this again, but I didn't have nothing else to do. So, you know, I'm in school, but I'm spending more time with the Bible because he gave me vision. So I was pursuing. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so when you see, watch this. Everything don't have you don't everything you may not know what to do with everything in your life. But if God gives you something to pursue, it settles you. What? Why? Why settle? Because now you will never feel lost. Anybody ever felt lost? Anybody ever felt like, what am I doing with my life? Where am I going? Which way am I going? And 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 and, and it is the vision that that settles it, that makes it say, no matter what's going right, no matter what's going wrong, no matter what mistake I don't make, at the end of the day, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. I know I'm in this this space. Y'all remember Abraham? He left the Ur of the Chaldees. He left where he's supposed to go. He entered into faith. He began to follow God. And even though he was making mistakes, he knew he was pursuing. He knew he was pursuing a place that God had set before him. And as long as he was pursuing it, he felt good about his life. He was able to keep growing. Did they make mistakes? Absolutely. Did they do stuff that didn't make no sense? Absolutely. Uh, hey, won't you just marry Hagar? Won't you have, you know, they were doing all kind of stuff. But in the midst of it, there was this uh, pursuit that kept him steady. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And when you're pursuing God, it also lets, uh, 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 it also keeps a measure of where there is a consistent visitation. Everybody say visitation. 
You got to have visitation. You got to have points in your life where God uh, reassures you that you're exactly where I want you to be. You got to have moments of, 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 of where things uh, become a little more clear or a little more plain or a little more exact. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Uh, it's almost like in the world they would call it deja vu. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Have I been here before? Oh, wait a minute. This feels like I am home. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So in Luke 15 is talking about these things that are lost and it is given this picture because Jesus is the one who's recovering man from this floating place without a vision people are floating around people are just coming up with stuff to do people are just doing things people are bumping into each other why because Jesus haven't recovered them and so in Luke 15 he's talking about a lost coin he's talking about a lost sheep and then he began to talk about this lost boy and the boy Boy thought he knew what he was supposed to do with his life and he began to take his inheritance and go out and live and do all this stuff and then when he finally came to himself and came home and said man my daddy them doing better than this I don't even know what's going on right now the dad said that uh the dad said look there's somebody who was lost that, you know what I'm saying we're celebrating it uh, he was lost, but now he is found. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so many times, uh, and many times, wa well, now watch this, watch this. So, so there's something interesting about Jesus because t Jesus said, they think I came to bring peace, but I really came to bring a sword. And so many times when you, everybody's lost, everybody gets along because everybody's lost together. Everybody's bumping into each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when somebody gets found, when somebody finds destiny, then everybody lost is upset with them because they don't understand what they're doing because they're lost and the other people know what they're doing. The other people have a surety and a uh, understanding. Have y'all ever seen people in church and you're like, hey, what ministry you want to serve on? I'm praying about it. See, see some <laughs> y'all talking about. I'm praying about it. It's been three years, man. You're still praying about it. What's wrong? You're lost. You lost. You don't know what to do with yourself. You don't know what to do with your existence, and so you can't make any forward steps or forward progress. But there is a system in our belief that will allow us to pursue because we need to. If we're not pursuing, then we're going to be floating around. We're not pursuing something that has us in it. See, watch this. Now, when people pursue, here's the great thing, right? Now, if I'm pursuing God and I'm pursuing things the way that God measured me to pursue it, then if someone's following me, then they can pursue God too and they can be free because I'm pursuing God and not stuff, God and not this and that. And many times, uh, let's say uh, a ministry is all about, okay, well, we're going to do this. And so then people give what they call faith projects. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to build it. And so then everybody, all right, do this. Now, when the thing is done, what begins to happen? The ministry begins to lose steam. People are like, well, we're done, right? Because that was not the vision of pursuit that God really gave. Because God's vision never loses steam. I'm going to tell you what it does. It keeps making you, uh, how many people have heard it, uh, of this phrase, uh, reinvent yourself? That was beginning to happen. So, uh, so over time, as you're pursuing God and you're moving in one phase of life, and then as you're moving to another phase, you begin to reinvent yourself. The minute, watch this, the minute Sister Jackson think, oh man, I'm comfortable, I'm serving God, then all of a sudden God brings somebody in her life and shake it up and be like, hey, that's good. That's great. But I need you to do X, Y, and Z now. And she's like, but I don't want to do that. I was just, uh, just minding my business, serving God. And God said, now it's time to reinvent yourself. Why? Because if you don't, then you will stop the pursuit and you will go into a place where you are, you are lost. You will go into a place where the vision is not directing you anymore and now you're just doing anything. You're doing all kind of stuff and it hurts. How many people know it hurts? And you know, when you waste life, 
When you, weigh, when you feel like you're wasting time, when you feel like you're wasting energy, it hurts. But when you understand, and I'm telling y'all, I can trace it back to when I was 18. I was 18, I'm on this journey. My life don't look right. Can I talk about it? Everybody else looked more successful than me. Everybody else around me, they driving better. <laughs> Come on now. They don't went to school and graduate, got their degree. They in their field. My field is 200 miles away in every direction. If I want to be a good engineer, I got to go to Dalton. I got to go all the way up to, uh, uh, I forget the place, almost into South Carolina. My church is in Decatur. If I'm going to follow this degree, I got to leave. I can't leave. Something is, pull, something is grabbing me like this and saying, your, your vision is connected to whatever's going on around here. And I know you're struggling. And I know they're driving good. And I know you're still in the, 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 the fourth pinto. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I know you're struggling. And I know it ain't, it, it's like it ain't really coming together. But I have you in pursuit of something. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so, and then watch this. As soon as things begin to come together, as soon as finally I, 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 uh, I uh, you know, I wanted to get married. <laughs> and then I'm having a conversation about marriage. And then, uh, and then I tell him, I say, well, I need a job first. And then the Lord gave me a job. He gave me a job that, thank God, I mean, it really, I had the job, but he gave me a promotion so I could make enough money to get married. All right, so about the, I got this job. I'm, about, I'm making enough money. Then I run into my wife. <laughs> I'm, I'm down in Megan, and then I'm doing this concert, and I'm wrapping my little soul out. And then I get done, and I go out the door, and the Lord's like, talk to her now. And so then I get my wife, right? And then I'm thinking, okay, it's coming together. Now we're getting ready to rise in this ministry. We're getting ready to go to the next level. Uh, we're having conversations about church hopping and stuff like that. We don't change churches. We, we grow in ministries and all this. Two months later, the Lord's like, leave. <laughs> Drop everything you're doing, go somewhere else. And then what begins to happen? Now we got to reinvent ourselves, who we thought we were, what we thought we were going to be doing, where we thought we were going to end up, where we thought we were going to land. It no longer makes sense now. But, what's, what, but what was my uh, uh, peace? What's my security? That I was pursuing God and the vision was stronger than ever. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, watch this. When you have vision, when you have vision, you have God's presence. When you have vision, you have more consistent encounters with God because he has to work with you to get things done. When you don't have vision, then you and God barely meet up. Because y'all ain't working on the same stuff no way. But when you have vision, you and God interact a lot more. Y'all understand what I'm saying, all right? And so, and so the system of pursuit, you got to understand what I'm saying, all right? So let's look at this. Let's look at, let's look at, let's look at, um, let's look at, let's look at things that pull you. Let's look at 2 Peter, all right? 2 Peter chapter 1. This is why this is important. I'm telling you, man. See, when you trying to when you trying to work your faith, and everybody else is working their lust. Oh man, y'all know what I'm talking about. Go on, travel that terrain of social media. You get on now, you be like, oh Lord, where's everybody going? They all over the place. Oh Jesus, oh Lord, what is? <laughs> y'all understand what I'm saying? And so look at First Peter, no Second Peter, chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. All right. Uh, Second Peter chapter one, verse one. It says, Simon Peter, a servant of uh, servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. I love that. Look at the dichotomy, right? Look at look at. Uh, I don't know if dichotomy is the right word, but look at look at division. Look at his vision. What was Peter doing when God met him? Anybody? He was fishing. How did this man make it to be an apostle? From a fisherman? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What was Peter doing when Jesus met him? He was fishing. He says, he, he sees himself, he sees, watch this, y'all. 
He's about to talk to people. He's put in the full picture of vision. I am a servant. I see myself all the way down in the beginning. I am an apostle. I see myself stretched out as far as God would take me and all he would do. I see the picture of it. You understand what I'm saying? Do you know, you know, let me say this. One of the gifts that God gives the body to help the body, because sometimes what governs the body negatively is something called fear. Everybody say fear. Fear, you know. And so because people scared, <laughs> then you got to use this gift. It's a gift, right? It's a prophetic gift. And the reason why you got that prophetic gift is so you can find out what people hiding because they scared. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So then the prophetic gift begin to pull on it and pull at it and tug around it. And you're like, man, why they bothering me? They ain't supposed to know. I don't want to deal with this part. And because you don't, you don't want to face your fear, but you got to face it. You got to face it. Look, look at somebody and say, face your fear. Face your fear. No, no, look at somebody and say, uh-huh. So they can look at you and face your face. Face your fear. Guess what? You got to. You got to. Can y'all imagine? Just, let's just think about it. Let's think about Peter's friends. Let's just say he had friends. <laughs> Let me just work with it. Let's say Peter had homeboys. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Let's say Peter had friends. All of a sudden, Peter followed Jesus. Jesus say, you're going to be an apostle. <laughs> Peter go home and be like, man, y'all don't get ready to be an apostle. What? You? <laughs> Not, I, the Lord, the, uh, all the people the Lord can pick, you ain't about to get me beat. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Then you, now think about you trying to emerge into something. You trying to pursue something and everybody around you don't understand because to them, it's laughable. There ain't no way. How in the world are you going to become something like this? How are you, how you going to become something this great? And the Lord is like, don't pay them no attention. Don't pay them no attention. Pursue. I found out most people who never pursue nothing because they lost while they laughing with the crew, they secretly calling from behind because their fear wouldn't let them step out into nothing because they needed man approval. Y'all understand? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Man, you going, dog? I ain't going with that, man. I wouldn't do that. I ain't, ain't going to do it either. And, and the whole time, they really want to go. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so, and so, and so then, and so then Peter he has to leave people. Watch this. He got to leave people he used to cuss with. Not you. You going to be a preacher? I know how you talk. You understand what I'm saying? I can remember I got saved when I was 18. I remember being at school trying to invite people to church. Come on, let's talk about it. Because normally what God going to have you do, when you start pursuing him, he going to have you start pulling on the folks you used to run with. Watch this. So I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing, I'm going to church, I'm going to school. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, man, you want to go to church? One girl told me, she said, no, no, it was a guy. He said, how long you been saved? I said, oh, I don't know. It was about two months. He said, come back in nine. <laughs> he, he was like, if you, if you last nine months, maybe, I, maybe, maybe, maybe we can talk. Y'all understand what I'm saying? He like, you, you, just, you just got into this thing. How you going to on me? But it was what they, look, I remember guys who used to invite me to parties. I went to the party in August. Now it's November. Going to the party. Here's what they would do. They would get a flyer. They would hand the flyer to me and laugh. Oh, I forgot you saved my baby. They hand the flyer to you. That, that's what would happen. But I had something to pursue. Y'all understand what I'm saying? What is the devil doing? The devil like, I don't want you to get there. I'm trying to make you uncomfortable. I'm trying to make you, I'm trying to make you feel like What's the point? I'm trying to bring you into a place of isolation, into a place of rejection that hopefully you never come out of. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying, he trying to take that seed that God put in you and bury it so deep that it never comes up. Y'all understand what I'm saying, all right? Now, that's just the world. Oh, God. But here comes another crew. Now you're trying to emerge. Jesus picking you as one of his favorites. But then two of your teammates, they got their mama coming to them like, now when we go into the kingdom, 
Can we sit in the best seat? Hold on, my man, hold on. How y'all come do me like that? We supposed to be three amigos. But when it's time to move, now you in the church, and now you got people jockeying for stuff that God promised you. And now what, but what, so what it really is, it's still the devil trying to figure out how to keep you from getting to the other end of the spectrum of who God called you to be. So now you're like, I don't want to deal with church people. So then, watch this. So now you got gifted people who don't want to be around church people. Well, who the world are you getting ready to serve? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so now you gifted and powerful, but you don't want to be around nobody. So what, so what, what happens now? Now you're still lost. Now you can't pursue. Now, now, now you can't go do the thing God wants you to do. Let me tell y'all something. Man, I, I can think about this thing. Oh, God. I would think, I'm going to talk about this thing, man. Come on, y'all think about Paul. Lord, I understand you saving me. But couldn't you just took me on out of here? Why you got to have me go face the people I was persecuting? No, no, no. You getting saved, now go to the folks you were terrorizing and make friends. These folks don't want to make friends with me. You come in the door, everybody slide to the side. Can you imagine the awkwardness he's trying to exist? Oh, man. You, look, it was so bad, y'all, through all the stuff Paul was doing to reconcile himself. The scripture said when he was in the end and he was standing before trial, none of the apostles came to stand with him. None of them. No, they're all in Jerusalem, but when it came time for him to face the music or face what God wanted him to face because God wanted him to testify before Caesar, but he used him being in the court system to do it, none of the apostles stood with him. He was, he was awkward. His own brother rejected him. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all remember what I said Sunday? It's one thing when you're doing what God told you to do and everybody's applauding it. It's another thing when you're doing what God told you to do and everybody's rejected. But that's what he said. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought I, thought I was doing what God told me to do. And you are. But the way it hits you. Y'all got to understand what I'm saying. So there is this blessingness of pursuit because you and God are having a good time. But then there is this curse of pursuit where you're having to deal with the opposition trying to stop you from going the way God wants you to go. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So if you're going to pursue God, my God, watch this. If you're going to stay in faith, you got to. First of all, you got to pick God over everybody. Number two. You got to know how to handle being in an awkward place. I'm, I'm pleasing God and upsetting you. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm talking about, oh, God, God happy and you mad. Oh, Lord. And watch this. The only thing that will make you happy is connected to me not pleasing God. And so now I can't stop doing what I'm doing because I'm trying to pursue God. But because I'm trying to pursue God, now there's a strain here. Y'all understand what I'm saying, all right? And so pursuing God determines. So you got Simon Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Jesus prayed this prayer. Jesus prayed this prayer. Jesus prayed this prayer. He said, I pray that you don't take them out of the world, but that you keep them from evil. Y'all see that? So watch this. I ain't going to take them out. I'm going to build them in the midst of it. Oh, no, Jesus. Y'all know how oil and water don't mix? So the oil sitting right there in it, anointing right there in the water, it, it ain't mixing, but it's sitting in it. Y'all understand? What I'm, that's what God does. He, watch this, he don't take you out of it. He, he, he make you develop right in the middle of it, right in the middle of, of whatever uh, is around you and whatever uh, you have to process he makes you develop right in the middle of it my god man I'm listen y'all oh god I feel this thing some people will only pursue once you start oh god let me just talk about this some people were never going to leave John the Baptist until you left him see watch this Peter and 
uh, Andrew, that's Peter's brother. Andrew found Jesus. They would connect John the Baptist. Andrew said, uh, we found the Messiah. It's time to go. All right, well, okay, you going, I'm going. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Some people only going to go when you go. See, so watch this. So what it's saying, my pursuit is not just about me. My pursuit is about the responsibility that I hold, the responsibility of who is following my steps. If I go, they're going to go too. If I move, they're going to move too. If I rise, they're going to rise too. Why? Because my pursuit is not just about me. It ain't just about me. It's about all the people come behind me. Y'all understand what I'm saying, all right? And so you got Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into, called us to glory and virtue. Everybody say called us. Now, this thing, this thing, let me just deal, let me just deal with it in layers, Okay. In the beginning, God came and visited man because there was no separation. Then, because man sinned, separation came in. Then in Genesis chapter 4, when Seth had a child named Enos, then the scriptures say, then men begin to call upon the Lord. Now, if someone say, I called him, what is that saying? We're not together. There's a separation. If you got to call somebody, that means y'all ain't next to each other. You ain't got to call somebody that's right there by you. You just talk to them. They right there. But then there became this concept where people called on the Lord because the Lord wasn't near them. So now they got to call on them. They got to call them into their reality. Y'all understand what I'm saying, all right? Now, once Jesus comes, he deals with the spirit part of the calling, right? So now... Um, the scripture said in Hebrews chapter 10, anyone that call on the Lord shall be saved, right? So he calls. So if you call the Lord, he comes in, he saves you. You don't have to call him anymore. Matthew 28, lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. So now he's with us. We don't have to call him to us. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Watch this. This is a part of us not being lost. Now watch this. Once you and Jesus enter into the same space, once the Holy Spirit comes, now he starts calling you. <laughs> and then, see, this is a pursuit. You say, now watch this, Kushar. The world is picking their pursuits. What you want to be? What you want to do? The church is finding out their pursuits. The church is discovering what is calling them. Look at somebody and say, what's calling you? <laughs> you see what I mean? That's what's happening. The, see, watch this. The world is picking what they, what, what the, watch this. Y'all know it's getting worse. Y'all, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting to in Peter because it, it, it's, 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 it's driven by lust. So the world ge- keeps calling themselves worse and worse stuff. Watch this, y'all. Y'all remember when I was praying today and I started talking about name change. I think it was today. Was it today I was talking about name change? As Abraham was getting called higher, God kept changing his name into something more like God. The higher he kept getting called, the higher his name. Now watch this, y'all. Peter, a servant. Oh, this is this the bottom. And an apostle. Please say, I am calling you up. Now, you, now you, you're going somewhere, but I'm calling you. You're pursuing, but I, it's my voice that's direct. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's my voice that's pulling you down a direction. Now, here's the great thing. Here's the great thing. God is near and far, right? So his voice is saying, come, come. But he's right next to you, leading you to the place. <laughs> but his voice is saying, come, come. So watch this. Paul said it like this. Something has apprehended me, and now I'm trying to grab it. Y'all see what I'm saying? And so now I'm trying to grab the thing that's grabbed me. And so now I'm pursuing. My goodness, man. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm telling you, man. See, some people, oh, man, I'm telling you, that's why you can't let fear. 
hey, just, 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 yell out. Just, just yell out, no fear. No fear. <laughs> just, well, I don't know if y'all meant that. Come on, let's just yell. One more time on the count of three. One, two, three. No fear. I don't know. I don't know if I fully believe. Come on, just yell out loud again, long again on the count of three. One, two, three. No fear. No fear, man. You will never, y'all got to hear what I'm saying. You would never go from servant to disciple, disciple to uh, 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 apostle to, 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 to one of the, the three with Jesus. You will never keep moving because fear is at every stage trying to figure out how to shut you down. You know it. I, it's, it's time for me to go. It's time for me to go. Watch this, y'all. I can remember transitioning into ministry, this, this phase. I can remember God saying to me, this is what he said verbatim, are you going to let him control you or me? That's what he said to me. Until I got to this phase of my life, I would not post anything online. I wouldn't. I don't have no video. I never post it. The Lord said, it's time. And then I was, I was, I was nervous. He, I, I, had to, I was nervous. I, I, I was uncomfortable. Because I knew what God was calling me to, but I knew what I had came out of. And the Lord said, are you going to let him control you or me? I said, I'm, I'm going with you. And then I started posting. I started posting. I started posting. I, that's, I, it was me breaking fear. Like, get off me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Then, watch this. Then you get on the other side, and then you begin to find out why he wanted you to jump that hurdle. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, so you, watch this. What, what am I trying to get across? Is pursuit great? Yes. But is pursuit easy? No. But what happens when you don't pursue? Well, everybody that cast out vision, they do everything. And this is what the scripture said. It says in Proverbs 29, it says, uh, without a vision, the people perish. But that word perish means to be naked. Without a vision, you don't have no clothes. You don't have no covering. You don't have no protection. Watch this. Without a vision, you're exposed. You're exposed. The devil can do anything he wants to to you. Why? Because you don't have no vision keeping you protected. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right? And so we want to, watch this. A part of the belief system that God's developing in us is that system to pursue. I can see it. I can see 18, and I mean, y'all, listen. I'm going to tell y'all something that I'm going to tell you something that I did because I'm scary. How many people scary in here? Just raise your hand if you're scary. I'm just, I'm just, just telling tell you. Sister Jackson, raise your hand. You, tell, raise your hand, Sister Jackson. How many people scared? <laughs> y'all ain't scared? No? You raise your hand if you're scared. Now, I know some of y'all scared. Okay, Charles, you scared? All right, all right. Everybody got a little fear of them, but some of the people scared. You say, I ain't scared. Let me ask you to do something you hadn't been doing for a while. Then let's, let's talk about if you're scary or not. Y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you know, then, yeah, that's some scary in you. Okay, thank you very much. I know. Why? Because when we don't have experience, that's what makes us nervous. But that doesn't mean that's not what God wants us to do. That doesn't mean that's not what God wants us to develop. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you, you know. Now I'm trying to remember why I had y'all do that. Because y'all don't y'all didn't raise your hand. Now y'all made me forget what I was about to say. I can't remember what I was about to say. Okay, got it. All right. Y'all listen to this. Listen to this. I was, I knew I was scared. So I knew I would never volunteer. I knew God had to always make someone else have me do it. I knew it. I was too scared. I would never go volunteer. <laughs> never. Because I, I was going to be in the corner. Get what? I'm in the corner. Now watch this. I pray in my closet. I worship in my closet. I lay hands in my closet. You understand what I'm saying? I come to church. I stand in the corner. I'm in the corner, cause I, I'm in the corner, nobody can see me, I'm over there. 
the deacon get up to start service. It's 300 plus people in there. Deacon get up to start service. I'm 18 years old. Don't nobody know me. He said, this morning we're going to have Brother Tim come up and lead us in prayer. What? I opened my, I looked up. <laughs> Who? They were like, you. I'm like, what? How? How did I get here? Bishop behind me. Lord Jesus, Bishop Reed right there. Lord, I mean, a pulpit full of people. I mean, oh, oh, Lord Jesus. No training. Can I talk about it? No training. Can I talk about it? Nothing. I'm ushering, y'all. What the world going on here? Why am I up front leading prayer in front of all these people who, who, who know more Bible than me, who've been saved longer than me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? But God knew. If I don't have people pull you, you ain't going. You ain't going to do it. You ain't never going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have people pull you. And that's what will happen. Now, Bishop, he would never call me by my name. I don't even know if he ever called me by my name even now. He was a young man. <laughs> and he would have me do all kinds of stuff. People want to see the Holy Ghost. Young man, go work with him. Uh, uh, somebody was starting a church in Noonan. He want people to help with it. Young man, you, uh, John, Drain, y'all go. That we, that we would do. He would have me go do stuff. And guess what I would do? I would never say no. I don't, there's no track record of no leader who've ever asked me to do something and I decline. I, watch this. I didn't, I, not only did I never say no, I never gave the attitude as if I wouldn't do it. Now, there's one time I did chicken out. <laughs> they asked me to preach. I ain't even come to church. Now you know that mess. <laughs> you know I messed up. Oh Lord. I don't know if I was scared or condemned, but one of the reasons I didn't go to church, I was like, I ain't even going. I just didn't even show up to church. I was so ashamed. I was so ashamed. I let them people down. But what I'm saying is, is that, watch this. When you pursue God. God has set this thing up so that there is a pursuit. No one is lost. Watch this. People are lost in the world. But when Jesus finds you, he puts you on a track. He puts you on something where you will always feel like you're at home. Yeah, you're lost in the world. Yeah, you're displaced among people who are lost. Watch this. You're, the lost people think you're lost but you're found by God. So it appears like you're lost because your life is not like theirs, but, you're, but you always feel at home because God and you are pursuing something. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because you're pursuing, and God will have me pursue, and then I'll pursue, and then I'll, oh, he, now he got me doing this, and then I'm doing it, and then now he had me doing that, and then I'm doing it because there is a system called pursuit, y'all. I'm telling you, and you won't be lost Watch this. You won't be trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. What am I doing? I'm trying to figure out my life. Y'all know that people lie right now. It's like, you fit. Do you still try to figure it out? Yes. Because without Jesus, people, people are going to be trying to figure out their life. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us a system of pursuit. Thank you for a part of our belief system is connected to you putting vision in front of us, putting purpose in front of us that we are to pursue. Father, I thank you, Lord, for pursuers. My God, man. That, you know, you know, let me just say this. Y'all come out of prayer. <laughs> let me just say this. That's what keeps Bible study fresh when you're pursuing. See, if you stay in the same season, them scriptures gonna get stale. But you don't have no challenge. But when you go into a new season, that word get fresh because now you need it for where you are right now. Y'all understand what I'm saying? When you in it, when you keep when you keep trying to in a new season, your prayer stay fresh. But when, guess what? When you, when you ain't doing that, when you ain't challenging, when you ain't pursuing that, your prayer is stale. They just religious. Lord, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, which is crazy. I can't believe I was saying that for 18 years. I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. Anybody pray that prayer? Anybody know that prayer? You praying it right now? <laughs> Not you, Sister Jackson. I was pointing at the young man. 
<laughs> anyway, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for raising pursuers. Thank you for raising people uh, that pursue your agenda and are found in you, are found in your presence, found in your vision. Found, my God, thank you for the transition, Lord. My God being in a lost state to being in a found state and the peace that came with it. My God, that's what Peter said. Grace and peace has been multiplied. Everybody that's found, they are living in a multiplied place of grace and peace. I thank you for it. Lord God, thank you for helping us not to pay attention to the lies of the devil. The devil just lying. He just lying. He lying because he don't want us to take advantage of what we are receiving because we are found in you. We thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for the pursuit. Thank you for the movement. Thank you for where you're taking us. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us something. Thank you for giving us a plow to put our hands to and never look back. We give your name the praise. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us into a place where, where there's no more vanity, but every part of our life adds value. My God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for making us prophetic in every way where we're always where you want us to be, no matter if we think we're somewhere on accident. Thank you, Lord, for giving us eyes that can always see the thing that's hidden right in plain sight. We give your name the praise for pursuers, God, that are not blind because lost people are blind. But God, we can see. We can see it we can grab it we can take advantage of it we can move it my god and we're receiving things my god that's taking us to the next level we thank you for it now in jesus name amen